Hi there. This video follows on from the last one, The Surprising Truth, which revealed a powerful approach to dial up the quality of your practice habits by squashing the negative effects of impatience. In this video, we're thinking about being a reflective practitioner, although not for the more obvious purpose of checking in with the quality of your playing or outcome, I'm actually talking here about the benefits of habitually checking in with your thoughts and feelings about your practice session at every moment and, in particular, noticing your levels of fun or boredom. This practice takes just a second, it's easy, and it helps you choose a suitable response including this element, will need self-directing to start with, but once you notice the benefits, the approach will start to become who you are as a piano practitioner. Professional pianists earn a living from their playing. It's their job. But whilst they actively work when they practice, they find enjoyment in the process too, through the challenge of expressing the music in the best way they can. How and why do they do that for so many hours every day? Let's start with why. Well, they are preparing several concert programmes of up to two hours each, all of which will be at different stages of completion to be ready over the next five years. They will, of course, be working on past repertoire as well as adding new, but that's a lot of music to get to grips with. How do they do this? By the time they are familiar with the cycles of their trade, like a few years have gone by, they will have several tricks up their sleeves. One of these is to be watchful for negative feelings such as boredom and impatience. These will quickly be diagnosed and then a solution applied straight away. They have learned to do this because they know that if they don't, tension starts to creep in and that creates a barrier to their progress and their playing. So to improve the quality of your practice, to what extent can you be watchful for negative feelings? Try actively engaging in this mindful approach next time you practice. We have looked at how to react when we feel impatient already, so we can move our music on. But now, how might we deal with boredom? Here is what this video has been leading to. It's the simple answer, which is to mix it up. Apply different practice strategies for each piece you're learning for each session. For example, in one session, play through a piece, just noticing areas for attention, not fixing, just noticing. Identify no more than three or four areas. This is likely to be your piano lesson, so you will have your teacher helping you with this. And then for the next few sessions, only practice these smaller sections or phrases. There are loads of ways to practice and each one you use moves you closer to perfecting those few bars. There are hidden benefits too. Your technique, coordination and muscle memory are also improving. So similar passages in other pieces in future will be easier. So I will be describing a variety of practice techniques in a future video. So now what I'd like to do is show you my practice wheel and notebook. Right, in my notebook, this is for what I'm going to be working on. And I don't write anything else, I just make a list. And this is my practice wheel. And this is useful for mixing up my practice. Each band represents one piece I'm doing and I decide what would be best to do tomorrow and I turn the bands to level up with the arrow. And this helps me plan my next session to target specific needs and it stirs up my activities so I never get bored. I hope this is helpful. Um, let me know how you feel about the things that I've been talking about. And especially, I'd really like to know if you've had a go at putting into practice some of the things that um, I'm discussing in these videos. And let me know how it goes. And um, let me know if you have any questions too. Bye.